All right. What's up, everyone? Let's go over the risk sentiment internals chart layout. Uh, this one is one of my favorites here. And basically, you're going to look at this to figure out if the market is offensive versus defensive. Is it risk on versus risk off? Uh, we'll go ahead and break down quickly everything that we've got in this chart layout and why I like it so much. Now, this is a market internals analysis chart providing a comprehensive view of the S&P 500 along key ratios and indicators, including high beta versus low volatility, discretionary versus staples, credit spreads, and biotech. Now, investors can use this chart to market uh, to gauge market sentiment and risk appetite by observing these diverse measures. The chart highlights instances of divergences where one ratio or sector diverges from the overall trend of the S&P 500, signaling potential shifts in market dynamics. And this chart layout right here was, you know, one of the many different chart layouts that really helped call the bottom and spot the potential bottom in October of 2022. Now, it also helps to identify confluence where all four indicators are, if they're all moving in the same direction, it really confirms strong market trends, right? During a strong downtrend, all indicators would likely trend downwards, while in a strong uptrend, they would move upwards, providing clear signals for market entry and exit points. So what do we mean by, you know, clear signals for market entry and exit points? Well, if we take a look here and we see that the S&P 500 is making a low and a lower low, right? Let's go ahead and just highlight that real quick so we can explain some of these things very simply for some of the beginners or people unfamiliar with some of these terms, right? We have lower lows here, right? This is very common practice in saying, but if you look on the high beta to low volatility ratio, we have a low and then we have higher lows at these points, right? The same place is where the S&P 500 is making lower lows. On the credit spreads ratio, we have lows, we have higher lows, right? And then on biotech, we have lows and we have higher lows. Now you may be saying, why are you looking at all four of these and comparing them to the S&P 500? What's the point of that? Well, as I mentioned, it kind of goes over risk sentiment and different structures and changes in the market. High beta to low volatility, you know, low volatility stocks are pretty self-explanatory, right? These are stocks that are, you know, relatively low in volatility. They're not going to see huge swings uh, in, in very large price changes, right? These aren't stocks that move 5% a day, 10% a day. It's very uncommon for these types of stocks. And high beta stocks are basically the exact opposite. These are stocks that tend to have um, much larger moves, right? So these stocks are a little bit more risky, okay? Because, you know, your, your investor or your trader that has a low risk appetite, they're going to look for low volatility stocks, right? Um, someone who's looking for, um, you know, higher gains, right? Higher risk and higher reward, uh, they're going to invest in higher beta stocks, right? And things, uh, look at Tesla and NVIDIA. Those are great examples, right? Tesla is a high beta stock, all right. And it's had a terrible performance compared to a lot of the other, um, you know, mega cap tech stocks versus NVIDIA has had an amazing performance um, relative to all of the other mega cap tech stocks. OK, so when you see this ratio going up, this means that basically the market is more risk on and people are chasing higher beta names versus seeking, um, you know, comfort or seeking, quote unquote, safety in some of the low volatility names. Right now, discretionary versus staples is one of the most common and wide known um, kind of ratios, sector ratios that people look at. Right. And it's pretty self-explanatory. OK, discretionary typically is things that you don't need. Right. They're discretionary versus staples are things that you need. Right. So think toilet paper, think soap. Right versus a discretionary can be stuff like, you know, tanning beds, for instance, all right? Um, and so if you see discretionaries outperforming staples, meaning that this chart is going up, um, then that's a much more bullish environment and a more risk on environment versus if you see this chart going down, uh, that kind of shows that people are seeking a little bit of safety or, you know, uh, less volatility um, than discretionaries, right? So that's a shift. Then we've got credit spreads here. We've got a measurement of credit spreads by looking at the HYG versus the IEI. This is basically looking at high yield bonds versus nominal bonds. Um, and you essentially want to see this moving with the market and in the direction of the market. And if you do, uh, it gives you confidence in the move. All right. And, and basically suggest, you know, like, hey, is the bond market scared about something right now? If it's scared about something, you're going to be seeing this go down. And you can see what we mean by when all four of these are going in the same direction, it really gives you confidence and strength in the move. For instance, S&P 500 in a downtrend here, right, when we started our last bear market. 
high beta versus low volatility was already in a downtrend before the market topped out. Then you have credit spreads here, really just going sideways the entire time while the S&P is going higher. And then you see that downtrend during the bear market. And same thing with biotech here. The last one is going to be XBI. Now, the reason that we use XBI is because in my opinion, it's one of, if not potentially the most, uh, risk on asset class. Now, why may I be saying that? Well, if you think about it, biotech companies are oftentimes profitless companies, right? And you're investing in a company hoping that they get some type of patent or drug or some type of research that they have uh, ends up turning into some type of a profitable product in the future that they can sell. But right now, those companies are lighting money on fire, right? And, you know, they're just spending tons of money on research and marketing, uh, trying to get into profitable, um, you know, profitability, essentially. And so that's why I look at all four of these. And that's why I call it a risk sentiment internals. Uh, and it really just helps gauge a little bit of you know, where you can potentially be looking at in the market, if you can have confidence in the current move and potential buy and sell signals, right? Again, we went over the divergences and how to use those divergences as signals. And we saw three out of four here suggesting that the market was actually more risk on when we bottomed here than what the chart was telling you if you were just looking at the naked S&P 500. Uh, and sure enough, it, it turned out that that ended up being true, right? We've risen almost 200 points um, you know, from this time since we saw this last signal. And here currently at the moment, we do technically have about four divergences, um, but only two of them are very strong and noticeable, right? We've got it in biotech. We've got it into the discretionary versus staples. But if you look here in high beta versus low volatility, uh, this one's just gone sideways, right? It's gone sideways. It's not continuing to make higher highs like the S&P 500 is. And when you look at credit spreads, um, you know, it's not super divergent. Uh, this one, I would say, is is more along following the line, keeping in trend and making higher highs and higher lows. Um, but if this really starts to flatten out here or start to roll over, uh, then essentially we're going to have, you know, four out of four saying that, hey, the market in risk sentiment is not as risk on as we think it is. For now, we're still in the clear. A large part of this is um, due to Tesla and the big underperformance in Tesla because Tesla is a large weighting uh, in the discretionary sector. Uh, so, you know, that has been uh, pulling that ET up down a little bit. So anyways, I really enjoy this one. I know you guys will enjoy it too. Uh, and it's really cool stuff to pay attention to once you start to dive into all of this. Uh, I've got an entire market internals chart package. Uh, you guys are going to love that. It's really good and really helps you step up your game. All right. Let's say you're, you know, you've been a beginner. All right. And you've been studying for a little while or maybe you've been trading for a year or two now. Um, and, you know, you really want to start learning some institutional analysis and in and, and different things like that. Uh, that's what this chart is here. And it's going to, um, you know, not only make you seem a lot more educated, uh, but also, you know, really give you some insight and clues into the market once you truly understand how to use it. So be sure to purchase those chart packages if you haven't. Uh, there's a link in the description if you've already purchased it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the rest of the videos explaining all of the chart layouts.